We begin with an historic achievement for China's space program this morning. Chinese state media reports a spacecraft has successfully landed on the dark side of the moon. The rover touched down this morning on the moon's largest impact crater, and this marks the first ever landing on the far side, which faces away from Earth. A photo shows a small crater and a barren surface that appears to be illuminated by light from the probe. The rover will conduct a number of experiments, including attempts to find water and other resources. With more on this, I want to bring in Paul Delaney. He's a physics and astronomy, astronomy professor at York University. Hello there, Paul. Good morning, Marcia. Happy, Happy New, new year, year. And the same to you and a big year for a big way to start the new year for China. How major is this accomplishment? Uh, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, the Chinese space program, both human space flight as well as the exploration of the moon, have been moving ahead very, very steadily. Uh, they landed on the moon four years ago with the rover. That was unprecedented, unexpected. And today they've done it now on lunar far side, which is technically a lot more challenging because they're out of direct line of sight communication with Earth. But they seem to have done it successfully and they've got, again, a rover on board. So very exciting mission. Why do you think China was interested in landing this rover on the moon? And why would they choose the far side, which, as you point out, points away from planet Earth? Well, the far side actually hasn't had very much in the way of exploration. We've orbited around the moon, obviously, many, many times. But to actually put a probe laden with instruments, and there are a lot of science instruments on board this craft, on lunar far side, gives us a very different perspective about lunar formation. Uh, we've brought back samples from lunar near side, but lunar far side, we suspect, has subtle differences, if you will, a little bit uh, of the differences between southern Ontario and the Northwest Territories. Similarities as far as structure and material is concerned, but differences. And technologically, it just goes to underscore how good the Chinese space program is. So there's a bit of politics as well as a bit of science playing into this land. Indeed. Now, the U.S. has barred NASA from working with China due to national security concerns. How much of a conflict could this become if the two countries are aggressively pursuing more common moon landings? Uh, well, I think back to the uh, 1960s and the space race between Russia and America, we probably got a little bit of that shaping up here as well. Uh, I, I think it was a mistake, unfortunately, for NASA not to work with the Chinese. They've been banned from the International Space Station. And I think that hurts space exploration in general. I think that's more politics than science and technology. But uh, the Chinese have made it very clear that they want to put boots on the moon in the not too distant future. And obviously landing this vehicle as they have done shows everybody that they have the technological capabilities to go ahead and do that. Yeah, so, yeah, a little astronaut. bit more excitement. Yeah, they want an astronaut next. So is this the beginning of a new space race, Paul? I think it could well be. And uh, let's face it, that spurred a lot of innovation in the 1960s. Uh, we could see a lot more interest from the Russian Space Federation and NASA with respect to the moon and potentially Mars as a result of the Chinese overtures to the moon. Paul, can just any country land on the moon? Anybody can go to the moon. Nobody can claim the moon. So there is a UN space treaty all the way back in 1967 that covers such things. But of course, you know, it's only as good as the paper that it's written on. But yes, technically, anybody could go to the moon. You and me could go to the moon, but it takes a lot of funding and a lot of science and technology. But yes, anybody can go to the moon. I prefer Earth. Paul Delaney, <laughs> thank you so much. We'll talk to you You're again welcome. soon.